And I mean, at the end of the day, The Flash Season 5 is a bad season because it's a bad show. Obviously. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and today's Adaptation Saturday. Happy Saturday. If you're new around here on Saturdays, we take a look at things that are adapted from one thing to another. Don't mind that intro. I just want to get all the people that hated The Flash to keep watching the episode. Over the past year, I made it one of my goals to catch up on the entirety of the show CW's The Flash after my friend Jay the Zoomster recommended it to me. By the way, go check out his channel. He'll be doing a season 5 review. Plus, he reviewed every episode in the season. So if you want episode reviews, they're right there. Anyways, I finished season four just in time for season five, and I've been watching season five week by week, which has been extremely weird for me because usually I don't watch TV shows when they air. The last time I did that was like Doctor Who back in like 2010. The Flash also has multiple breaks in between some episodes, which made it really hard to watch week by week. I was so used to binging the season that by the time I got to the week by week stuff, I had to wait like a month for one episode. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this. But either way, that's not gonna affect my review of the show because I went and rewatched the entirety of season five right before the finale. And I'm here to tell you that The Flash season five was awful. I'm just kidding. I actually, I actually really liked it. Let's take a look. That satellite. It wasn't just me who took it down. Who was it? Another speedster. If you don't know anything about it, The Flash is a superhero drama on the CW. It features Barry Allen, a metahuman who is the fastest man alive. Season 5 is mainly the story of Nora West Allen, Barry's future daughter, who comes to the present to help stop a metahuman serial killer named Cicada. We will be talking about some spoilers throughout the video, but if you haven't seen the finale yet, don't worry, I'm not spoiling that. The coolest thing by far about season five is how well it is set up from the past seasons. With Nora being introduced in season four, who's this mysterious girl that we don't know anything about, finding out that she is Barry's future daughter and seeing their relationship play out made this season rewarding enough. But while Nora is the main focus on the season, there's still tons of callbacks to the first four seasons that I absolutely loved. One of my favorite episodes this season is the season premiere. It not only sets up a lot of arcs for season five, some of which I like, some of which I didn't like, but we also get what seems like a tribute to this show so far. With the current showrunner passing the torch on to somebody else, it made season five seem like the end of an era, which kind of makes a lot of sense considering that its sister show Arrow will be finishing its run next season and even more so the big crossover event Crisis on Infinite Earths will be the swan song to Arrow and a lot of the Arrowverse. But as I said season 5 has a lot of plots. The main one is focused on Nora who actually ended up being one of my favorite characters in the show. Her story isn't only interesting because she's someone from the future but we learned a lot about her through her actions and the people she has worked with, which made a lot of interesting twists, especially in the later half of the season. The fact that she does end up working with Eobard Thawn, the man who killed her grandmother, was shocking in the mid-season finale, and it was the main thing that actually kept me watching the season. Not only that, but the finale did something completely unexpected, and while emotionally I'm still getting over it, it was a fulfilling ending to the season. The next main plot has to do with the metahuman serial killer Cicada. Cicada is a villain that took some time for me to get used to. I wasn't the biggest fan of him at first, and honestly, during my rewatch, it still took me a little bit to warm up to him, but overall, I think he is one of the best written characters in the Flash villain department. With a compelling backstory that has some narrative parallels to Barry Allen, seeing what he does actually makes some sense, even if he is out there killing people. His conclusion as a villain was also both rewarding and disappointing at the same time, but we'll get into that in a bit. The main reasons I wasn't a big fan of Cicada at first was the acting of Chris Klein. It's not particularly great, but I dealt with it as the season continued. He was a villain that wasn't as intimidating as past season long villains. And honestly, he's still not as cool as others like Zoom, the Reverse Flash, or even Savitar. But with all that being said, we did get a nice redemption art with Cicada and that made me very happy. Until Cicada 2 popped up. 
We find out in episode 16 that Grace, Cicada's niece, comes from the future and takes on the mantle as Cicada 2, right after Cicada 1 takes a cure to get rid of his metahuman abilities. This complicates things quite a bit. After a rewatch, I do like the Grace twist a little bit more. They do set this up fairly well, but by the end of the season, the execution's just not good. She's not a great actor. The character didn't bring anything new to the Cicada formula that Cicada had already done. So it just felt like a lot of wasted potential and I wish they didn't have her. As far as everything else goes, like it was a very solid season. Wait a second. Plot three. Killer Frost, dad, icicle, he sucks, he sucks. Uh, throughout the beginning of the season, we find out that Caitlyn, Killer Frost, is searching for her father. Uh, they go through Great Lakes to find him. They realize that his fa their fa her father has a persona just like Killer Frost. He's named Icicle, he's just bad, he's awful, he brings nothing to the season. Fortunately, we only get him in two episodes, but those two episodes end up being two of my least favorite episodes in the season. And honestly, I wish he wouldn't be there. But why listen to me when we can ask a friend of the show? Hey, Homa Zach, what are your thoughts on Icicle? I think I'd rather rewatch the Star Wars Holiday Special while getting a vasectomy. Thanks, Homa Zach. Very cool. My favorite plot of the season, though, by far, was everything that had to do with Eobard Thawne. Seeing this dude back in a prevalent part of the plot was awesome. His part in the finale wasn't as great as I thought it could be, but it was still pretty awesome to have him back. But other than all the main plots, what else is there to say about this season? Honestly, it's one of the best seasons of the show, if not the best. It hits a lot of the same marks as season one does for me. Since this is a CW drama, the drama does play a big part in the show, and I think overall, this season has a lot of the best drama of the entire show. We get a lot of character interactions and situations that while not entirely relatable, they are still very interesting to see play out. Sure, I'll never have to deal with my daughter coming back from the future and working with a man that killed my mother. That's just drama I'll never have to see in my life. Here's hoping, knock on wood. But even so, seeing the relationship between Nora and Barry, Nora and Iris, Nora and Thons, and even Barry's and Iris' relationship, having new ideas to them and aspects of them that we haven't seen this far, was really cool and enjoyable to see unfold. We also get a lot of new character interactions that were different from other seasons. The new Wells of the season is Sherlock Wells, a French version of Sherlock Holmes and Wells. He's a master detective. He was easily one of my favorite characters this season and seeing his relationship with Ralph as another detective ended up being one of my favorite parts of the show, especially considering what happens with Ralph in the finale. One of the problems I did have with this season was that the cast was too bloated. We have so many characters at this point and oftentimes that just means that certain characters that I liked just weren't in episodes. While this was a problem and I would have loved to see more Sisko and Ralph, I do think what they did with the characters was still great. In fact, Sisko and his plot with the season left me happy. Again, a little bit emotional after the finale, but I really couldn't see things happening with him any other way. At the end of the day, I watched The Flash for two reasons. One, I love the characters. I'm definitely attached to most of the characters at this point, and I'm gonna continue watching this show until it ends for that very reason. Two, I'm still very interested in seeing what's gonna come next. While this season didn't introduce too many insane plot points like past seasons had, there were still new concepts that kept me returning every single week. Season five isn't flawless by any means. I still have issues with bits of the main plots, but on an episode by episode basis, these were some of the most enjoyable episodes of the entire show. If you haven't seen season five yet and you're wondering, should I? I'd say absolutely go for it. Even if you skipped seasons three and four, I know a lot of people stopped watching the show then. I think season five will be enough to bring you back into the show. Not only that, but Crisis on Infinite Earths is happening this fall. And if you're not caught up to the Arrowverse yet, I think now is the perfect time to do so. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by the Your Everyday Nerd Patreon. I love making this show, and one of the biggest challenges that I currently have is that I can't dedicate as much time to the show as I would like to. As a freelance video editor, a lot of my time goes to editing for other people so that I can do that thing called paying bills. But I really do believe that Your Everyday Nerd has a lot of potential to be something bigger and greater, and that's why I'm asking for your help. If you've been enjoying the show and wondered how can I support this show as much as possible, 
the Patreon is where it's at. My main goal for this Patreon was to give you something in return for your money. This is not just a donation service. Every single tier has something in addition to your regular Your Everyday Nerd episodes. For only $3 a month, you'll have access to Patreon-only content like lists, extra reviews, and behind the scenes. You'll be credited in the end card of new episodes, and you can suggest a topic on my show, Let's Talk About It, over on my second channel, where I'll talk about whatever it is you want me to talk about. And have access to the Patreon-only Discord channel. Thank you again for watching and for supporting your everyday nerd. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If you're Asian, you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what you're excited to see me cover in the Arrowverse because since Crisis is literally this fall, I want to get caught up on everything. I need to watch all of Arrow. I need to watch all of Legends of Tomorrow. I need to watch all of Supergirl. I'm going to make videos of every single season. So get hype because we're going to be doing that. Also, as far as CW stuff goes, I did start watching Supernatural recently. So I'm going to be watching the first five seasons of that. I'm on season three right now before the fall and maybe even more if I can fit it in. Anyways, I have a poll in the description box that asks you, what do you want to see more of me doing on this show? So go check that out if you're interested and I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.